In this lecture, we are going to see what is liquidity, how do we assess it, and what are the main liquidity ratios. First of all, what is liquidity? Let me answer to this question by telling you a story. Early 2000, a guy named Elon Musk, of course you know him because he's, he was the founder of PayPal and also Tesla and then SpaceX, but early 2000, after Elon Musk sold PayPal to eBay for an astonishing $1.5 billion, he actually was able to get from the sale of PayPal $160 million because he was the major shareholders at the time of PayPal. With that money, Elon Musk started a company called Tesla and is a company that revolutionized the electric car industry today. But keep in mind that in 2009, Elon Musk Tesla was about to be bankrupt. Why is that? Well, because Tesla was lacking liquidity. When we use the word liquidity, we actually mean cash. In other words, Tesla was not able to meet its obligation in the short terms. How do we actually assess liquidity? Where do we look for when we want to know whether a company is liquid enough or not? Well, the first thing that we do is actually to look at the balance sheet. Indeed, if we scroll down in our spreadsheet here and we look at the balance sheet, we can see that there is a first section, there is the current asset section that tells us a lot about the liquidity of a company. In other words, the current assets are those assets that can be easily converted in cash or at least can be converted in cash within one year. Therefore, when a company has many resources tied in current assets, most of the time the company is able to meet its short-term obligations. Now, how do we actually see whether a company's current assets are enough to meet its short-term obligations? Well, we have to compare the current assets with the current liabilities of a company. And if we scroll up in the spreadsheet, we can see that the main liquidity ratios that actually help us to assess whether a company is going to be able to meet its short-term obligations are, are the current ratio, the quick ratio or acid test, and the cash ratio or absolute ratio. Now, when it comes to the current ratio, this is given by the current assets over the current liabilities. In other words, if we go on and we take our current assets from the balance sheet here, and then we do the same and take the current liabilities from our balance sheet. We can see that in this case, our current ratio is 2.64. It is a very high ratio. In other words, this ratio, this number is telling us you have more than twice the current assets to meet your current liabilities. And therefore, it means that in the short term, you are able to pay your obligations. Usually and in general, a current ratio of one is neutral. A current ratio over than two is actually very good. It means that the company is safe. In addition, when we see a current ratio growing over time, this is a good sign because the company, it means that the company is becoming safer and safer. On the other hand, why don't I like the current ratio that much? For a simple reason, when we look at the current assets, for example, if we go under our balance sheet, we can see that there are several kinds of current assets. We can see that there is cash, and of course cash is cash, and then we have accounts receivable, inventories, and prepaid expenses. Now, although the account receivable, for example, most of the time can be easily converted in cash, this is not always true, and the same applies for the inventories and the prepaid expenses. Actually, when it comes to prepaid expenses, this is tricky because although we consider them current assets, most of the time prepaid expenses are never converted in cash. Having said that, the current ratio is a very useful one, but also I think limited just because of it, just because the current assets are including, are comprising all the other current assets that cannot be easily converted in cash. That's why we usually take the quick ratio as a more reliable metric, a more reliable measure. In other words, the quick ratio is given by the liquid assets over the current liabilities. But what are the liquid assets? The liquid assets are those ones who can be easily convertible and converted in cash. In other words, if we want to compute our quick ratio here, we go on and we take under our balance sheet all the items that we said. Therefore, we take the cash and then, of course, we take the accounts receivable 
And that's it for now because we don't have any cash equivalents or short term investments in this case. But usually if we had other items such as those ones, we would have taken them to compute our quick ratio. Now to compute our quick ratio, we want to get also our current liabilities from the balance sheet. And that's what we do. As you can see here, also the quick ratio is very high because most of the current assets resources are coming from the cash account. And this is for this case, this is very good because it means that the business has a lot of cash. Although sometimes, most of the time, this is not going to happen. Why is not going to happen? Because most companies, as soon as they have cash, they get this cash and they try to invest it in other current assets or long term assets that will generate profits for the company. That's why it's very rare to see a company plenty of cash, except in Microsoft case where you see a company that has a lot of cash available. But it is also true that, for example, in the high tech industry, is more common to have a company with a lot of cash just because the business is more volatile and therefore a business that operates in the IT industry might see a decrease, a sudden decrease in revenues and to avoid that the company remains without liquidity and therefore the money to pay the salaries to its employees or the money to give back to its suppliers, it is very important to have a lot of liquidity. But except those cases, in general, you're not going to see this scenario. Now, a quick ratio or an acid test of 2.50 is a very high one. It means that the company is very, very safe. And therefore, if a company has at least a quick ratio of one, it means that the company is very, very safe and it's a very good one. And of course, if you have a quick ratio that goes below than one, I would be more worried. Although, again, you need to really investigate to really understand what is going on there. And you need to cross this quick ratio with other measure and other profitability ratios or leverage ratios that will help you to give you a wider perspective on the business operations. Now, if the quick ratio or acid test is a stricter ratio compared to the current ratio, there is a third one that is very strict and it is the cash ratio. The cash ratio is given by absolute assets over current liabilities. The absolute assets are cash, cash equivalents and short term investments. In other words, while the quick ratio or liquid assets are comprising the AR, the cash ratio instead is not comprising the AR, but just really those instruments that will be easily and readily available in cash, such as cash and cash equivalents and of course short term investments. But why is AR not comprised in the absolute assets? When you say, okay, this is AR, but most of the time AR are sums of money that we have to get from our customers and of course customers will pay. But this is not always true. Why? Imagine the case in which you run a restaurant and you have some people who come in all the time and they say okay let's open an account we want to open an account with your restaurant we're going to eat for one year and then at the end of the year after accruing all our expenses we are going to pay you or we're going to pay your restaurant but what happens if that account doesn't pay you're gonna have your money lumped in the accounts receivable but those money this money you don't know if it's going to be recovered or not of course, you can send this money to collection or to a collection agency and most probably the collection agency is going to be able to give you back 5, 10, 15 percent of the money that you were supposed to get from your customers. But who knows? You don't know how much of it is going to be really readily available in cash. Now, to compute this current ratio, we just have to get in this case our cash. And then, of course, we are going to get our current liabilities. And that's how we're going to compute our cash ratio that is going to be a 2.50 now. Again, in this case, we are analyzing a very liquid business and this business is pretty safe and everything is fine. We have a current a cash ratio that is over 2 and all the other ratios as well. And this is mainly due to the fact that the cash is the account where most of the resources are coming from. But there are cases in which this doesn't happen and that's when you want to be careful.